breathing was like rowing a boat, taking a zillion short and stilted strokes will get you where you're going, but they pale in comparison to the efficiency and speed of fewer, longer strokes. James Nestor Want to hear a crazy fact? Humans are the worst species of mammals on the entire planet when it comes to breathing. As humans have evolved in so many ways, we've actually gone backwards when it comes to breathing. This disevolution has led to misaligned jaws, overbites, underbites, and snaggled teeth. Even worse, it affects our ability to breathe efficiently while sleeping, resulting in conditions like snoring and sleep apnea. According to James Nestor, we have actually lost the ability to breathe correctly. The good news is that through research of ancient breathing practices, he has found the solution to teach yourself how to breathe properly with the potential of improving your health, sleep, and fitness. In the next few minutes, we'll cover some of the key lessons from the book for you. Number one, breathe through your nose. One of the single worst things that you can do for your health is to breathe through your mouth. In a study that James and a friend of his did, they clamped his nose and filled it with gauze so that he had to breathe out of his mouth. On the first day alone, his blood pressure jumped 20 points. And by the 10th day, James quit due to headaches, poor sleep, and other health-related issues. Both he and the person who performed the experiment with him had significant health problems, and the only thing they changed was how they were breathing. After just a few days focusing on nasal breathing, James was able to fix these things and noticed a significant increase in the quality of his sleep, mental clarity, and many physical measures that he was tracking. To this day, James sleeps with a small piece of tape over his mouth to force himself to breathe through his nose while he is sleeping. Number two, breathe less. The body needs oxygen, so it makes sense that breathing more would be healthy to get more oxygen, right? Wrong. The limiting factor for most of us is not how much oxygen we can take in, but how much we can absorb. To increase how much we can absorb, we actually need to increase the amount of carbon dioxide that is in our blood. Oxygen is attracted to areas of the body where there is a lot of carbon dioxide. By increasing the amount of CO2 in the blood, we increase the amount of oxygen the body is using. And the easiest way to do this is, you guessed it, breathe as slowly as you can. The average American breathes 18 times a minute. If you can reduce this to six times, then you'll increase the CO2 in your blood by up to 25%. Next, match the rhythm of your inhales and your exhales. Through research, Nestor found that many religious chants promoted breathing patterns where the inhale and exhale matched in length. You may have run across this if you've done guided meditations, where they will have you breathe in for a count of eight and then out for a count of eight as well. The most common symmetrical breathing pattern James found was 5.5 seconds in and 5.5 seconds out. Interestingly, this also translates to about 5.5 breaths per minute. This breathing pattern was found in many different eras and cultures throughout human history. Next, slow exhales for relaxation. Anxiety and stress both create a very shallow, rapid breathing pattern. This puts our body in a sympathetic state. This sympathetic state is the flight or fight feeling that causes us to be alert and even on edge. By focusing on slow, measured exhales, you can bring yourself out of this state of fight and into one where both your mind and body are more relaxed. When you're feeling anxious or stressed, try counting to eight while exhaling for 10 to 15 breaths to bring your heart rate back down and relieve some of the stress. Next, lungs can be strengthened. Nestor spent time around a lot of freedivers while doing his research. Freedivers have amazing lung capacity, and often they are double what a normal person has. Few, if any of these people, were born with this amazing lung capacity. They had to develop it. Lungs, like all muscles, can be strengthened through exercise and effort. Breathing deeply mixed with moderate, long-effort exercise like walking, cycling, or swimming 
can quickly lead to changes in your lung capacity. And lastly, live longer by breathing less. Throughout the animal kingdom, there is a pattern. The animals with the slowest heart rates live the longest on average. Elephants and alligators regularly only take one to five breaths a minute and live longer than almost any other animal species. Your favorite pet, be it a dog or a cat, breathes much more and has a much higher heart rate than that. This is why many of our furry friends only have a life expectancy of 10 to 15 years. By focusing on breathing slower and more fully, we can improve our own health and our chances of living a long life. Remember, breathing was like rowing a boat. Taking a zillion short and stilted strokes will get you where you're going, but they pale in comparison to the efficiency and speed of a few longer strokes. Before picking up this book, I assumed I knew everything I needed to about breathing, and after I finished it, I realized it's a topic that is rich in things to explore, and there will always be room for improvement in the way we breathe. The best thing is that all this improvement will directly impact our health. Do you have a book that you think we should animate? Leave your comments down below, and I'll do my best to read and make a video from your ideas. And as always, if you're still here, you must have enjoyed the video, so do us a favor and hit the like and subscribe buttons to show your support for the channel.